Hello YouTube. I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. I haven't done a video like this in a very long time, just sitting casually chatting with the camera. Um, in fact, today I'm, I'm sitting in my backyard here in, in Tennessee, drinking coffee, watching the sun come up. And, um, you know, normally I'm out here just kind of doing my morning thoughts, trying to get my day in order here. I decided I wanted to make a video talking about what it's like to move across the country as a hairdresser who has been cutting hair for 20 years in the same place. I was in Southern California for my entire life, uh, 39 years now, and uh, I've been cutting hair for the last 20 of those years. And about two months ago, we picked up and we left. We came to Tennessee. This isn't gonna be like a how to move, to, how to move across the country video, because like I'm figuring it out, but when I started posting on Instagram about this move, I started getting lots and lots and lots of comments talking about people saying, I want to do that, but I don't know where to begin. And so what I want to do with this video is in a, in a, in a casual, unscripted manner here, as you can tell, I'm not prepared. I have, this is literal, actual bedhead. I woke up, I made coffee, I came straight outside. I actually wanted to get out here before the sun came up because the, the light would be more interesting this way. I want to talk about what I've done in preparation for this move over the last year. I want to talk about what I'm currently doing now that I'm two months into the move. I want to talk about what's gone well so far. I want to talk about what I learned really quickly is, is not working at, for me um, or, or didn't work as well as I thought it was going to. And so hopefully anybody who's in my position trying to move across the country as a barber or hairstylist can just take some of these tips um, or take some of my ramblings here, my stories, and get some value out of it. So I guess, where do I begin? My career in California was phenomenal. I had no complaints about it. I was book solid for many, many, many years. Pretty much had like my dream job. I had exactly like my kind of clients doing the kind of hair that I like to do. I, I just was able to get into such a, a niche that I just had like, oh, this, this is the kind of haircut that I'm good at. This is the kind of haircut that I like. And I was just booked with that all day, every day. If I was at work, I was booked. You know, I know everyone's leaving California right now. A lot of it is political or financial. And for me, it was 100% that I just wanted this giant yard that I'm sitting in. I have a, a very, very big yard here and I have two small children. I just couldn't afford a lot of yard in California for them. And I wanted to go somewhere where I could get a lot of yard. That was essentially, that's it. It's like, it's not that I couldn't make it in California. It's that uh, the, the way of life in California, I, I, I enjoyed having so many parks and things to do around us in California. We're here in Tennessee. We have like a park in my, in my city. You know, it's, it's like a trade-off. Like I, I could have stayed in California and instead of having a yard, I just had a lot of parks around me and, and instead of driving, 60 miles in an hour for work i would drive an hour to go 10 miles for work like it was just different in california um and I, it's not like i'm like oh tennessee is so much better than california and it's not like i'm like oh california is better than tennessee it's just different and for what i needed in my life at this point i've got two small children and i wanted to have a giant yard for them where we could build a tire swing and a tree house and all of that sort of stuff so we came to tennessee in preparation for this move you know i'm going to start here because this is at the very, very beginning. This is the first, first thing I did, even before I knew I needed to move. My entire adult life, I've been very weird financially. I don't like debt. I don't like the feeling of knowing that I owe for something. And I'm one of those weirdos who like on a, on a regular average income, like I don't make a ton of money. I make average money, if that even some years. Um, just by avoiding debt and spending, I guess, wisely might be the word. I haven't had a car payment in, I don't remember how long. It's been a very long time since I've had a car payment. My house that I was in in California was paid off. Like I bought the cheapest house I could see myself living in and I sent triple payments on it until it was just paid off. Like, I don't know. It's like, I was, I had this fear that one day I would like break a hand and not be able to cut hair again. Or, or, uh, or like one day people would be like, Hey, wait a minute. You're, you're actually not that cool. We don't want to come to you for haircuts anymore. I just always had this kind of like low key fear that for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe like in 2020, like my income would just stop coming for some reason. For the last 20 years, I've, I've worked to put myself in a position where I have savings and I, I don't have any debt. Um, I'm not balling by any means, but I also, I just like to live in a way where I can go a little while without 
having work. So I, I just did that because that's just how I am. And that's, that's how I've always lived. But I realize now after talking to a lot of people who have tried to make the same kind of move that I've made, that it was really, really helpful. Ooh, that's a really gross looking spider. Um, that I, I wouldn't have been able to make this move, I think, if I didn't live that way. Because I had savings and I, had, I didn't have a whole bunch of debt to bring with me across the country. That's like step one. Like if, you, if you're in and see, see the hard thing about being a hairdresser or barber, obviously, and moving across the country is you don't have clients on the other side of the country. So you don't have any income when you get to your destination. And so I've always lived in a way where if like a global pandemic happens and I can't work for five months, I'm not gonna lose my house. I'm not gonna lose my car. It also just worked out that, hey, if I drive across the country with my family and have no clients where I arrive, like I'll be okay for a few months. So that was step one. If you're thinking of moving across the country, try to get your finances in order to where you can be broke, like real broke for a short period or prolonged period. Cause I mean, I don't even know how long it's gonna take me to grow at this salon that I'm currently at. So the second thing is, um, this is a big pointer. If you are a barber or a hairstylist and you are self-employed, before you start getting your hopes set on any kind of move, go talk to a lender, go talk to your CPA or your uh, tax person, talk to like all the financial people in your life who, who are gonna make these calls for you that you have no control over. If you wanna get a loan, you can't get a loan, you just can't. Turns out I couldn't get a loan. They, they wouldn't loan me even a little bit of money because in my circumstances, I had this boom in business in California and the banks or the lenders or whoever, they're not stupid. They know that I don't have clients in Tennessee. So when I said, hey, I wanna sell my house in California and go buy a house in Tennessee, can I borrow some money to, to make that better? They wouldn't give it to me. I, I couldn't get any kind of loan. I tried three different brokers who all started off saying, oh, no, 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 this is a piece of cake, I'm your guy. Uh, first of all, everybody, everybody who recommends like their mortgage guy or their lender, they're like, oh, you gotta talk to my broker, he's so good, he's the best. And then like you talk to them and you're like, oh, turns out everybody knows the best one. But anyways, I had three different brokers work with me and say, no, we just, we can't do anything for you. So my income in California, I'm like self-employed there. And something, I don't know the exact details, but something about being self-employed and trying to get a loan, they just don't like it. They're like, oh no, that income, even though I can show 20 years of tax returns saying that I make decent money, they don't like that income. And on top of that, even though at the salon I'm currently employed at in Tennessee, I am an employee, like a W-2 employee, but it's commission-based. The uh, lenders, they don't like that. They're like, well, you're gonna go to a, you're gonna go to into a service industry job that is completely commission-based and you're not from there. Like, no, we're not gonna loan you any money. So I didn't find all that out until after, I mean, I, I never try to like lie or cheat on my taxes, but for the last two years, I tried to show every dollar I could make, even though it meant paying more in taxes, but like every, like I was taking tips to the bank and trying to just claim all this income because I was like, well, I gotta show that I make a lot of money so I can get a loan to buy this house. And then after all that, it turned out I couldn't get a loan anyways. And so I was like, all right, whatever. Um, so that's, you know, tip number two. Oftentimes hairdressers are not the breadwinner of the family. It's like, you know, husband's a firefighter or a, or a construction worker, foreman or whatever, whatever job he has that's like a real job. And then the wife does hair. Or, or like a lot of, you know, young 20 something year old barbers um, who are like, well, I don't have a family. Like I just take care of myself, you know? Uh, it's, so being like the breadwinner for a family of four and, and um, being self-employed in a service industry, trying to move across the country, like it was literally, it was impossible to get a loan. I mean, it got to the point where some of the people who I was being referred to for these loans, I was like, that's sketchy, dude. Like they wanted me to lie on this form and, and lie about that. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna do all that. Like that's sketchy. I'm gonna like go, get arrested for fraud or something. Look into all that long before you start making other big moves toward the move, find out what you could do financially. Mo moving forward, I'm rambling. I maybe need more coffee or maybe I've had too much coffee. Mm. What I told all my clients in California before we left, I said, look, whenever my house here sells, I'm, I'm packing up and I'm driving across the country and I can't come back and cut your hair until I'm settled somewhere. So I didn't know if it was gonna take me two weeks to drive to Tennessee and find a house and move in or if it was gonna take me three months. I didn't know if I was gonna wind up in an Airbnb for six months or how it was gonna go down. And so that was 
a really unfortunate thing as far as trying to schedule with clients. You know, I had, I had everything from people who have been with me for years who just immediately were like, oh, okay, cool, I'll just go to someone else now. I'm like, okay, to people who were like, like blowing me up on my personal phone, just like, like when is the last minute you're in town? I need to get a haircut that minute. And, um, and I, I didn't have a very clear answer to give my clients. And so that's a hard thing about moving across the country as a hairdresser is like, I, I can't just say, oh, okay, on this date, I'm coming back because I didn't know, I didn't know where I was gonna end up. I didn't know when I was gonna end up there. And I didn't know when I was gonna have my family situated in such a way that I could just get on a plane to go back to California for a week to do haircuts. And so like, I just had to tell all my clients like, like I think in the meantime, go to this guy, he's, he's great. In the meantime, go to this girl, she's great. Um, and then I'll, I will text you when I know. So that was, that was something that I thought would be easier than it was, was just texting my clients. So the manager of my, at my salon in California was able to give me like a, kind of like a master list of almost everybody that was in my chair, at like ever. And so I just had this PDF of hundreds of names and phone numbers. And so once I did have things settled here in Tennessee and I was ready to fly back to California, as soon as I opened up dates in California, I sat down on my phone with this list of, of names and phone numbers I started copying and pasting the same message saying, hey, it's Andrew, I'm gonna be in town on these dates, go book it on the salon website. This is a copy and pasted message, do not reply, just go book if you want a haircut. And so I started like copying that and pasting and sending it to every name down this list. And when I got about, I don't know, 90 or 100 names down the list, my brain started getting tired. I was like, you know, just fatigued from looking at the screen, doing a repetitive task. And, task. and I thought, well, dude, I just sent this to like 100 people. Um, how many appointments do I even have available? Like I hadn't even done that math yet. Like in a week, it's not even a week, in four days in California, working 12 hours each day, how many haircuts can I actually do? And I'm like, not, not that many actually, it turns out. And so I, I had 44 openings on my books because my, my first day started a little late due to the flight time and my last day ended a little early due to the flight time. So I had 44 appointments available. I had just texted 90 people about them. And then I went back to my list of clients and I was like, dude, there's like, 250 more names on this. And then I felt horrible because I had all these clients who I love and, and, and really, really wanted to cut and really wanted to work with who I just, I didn't text because I started going down the list. I got through 90 names. And um, so I didn't do that math months ago when I should have. I did that math as I realized I'm not gonna be able to fit in all my clients. And so in retrospect, what I think I would have done probably is made a list first of like clients who energize me to work with clients who are very dependable like no people who just don't no show or cancel um clients who like I, I hate to say it but would appreciate my haircut more than the next guy like i got a lot of clients who are like oh dude i really like the way you cut my hair and i have a lot of clients who are like dude i haven't been to someone else in 15 years and so what i would have done in retrospect is made a list of like like top tier clients and i would have reached out to them first um so what I did after I texted the 90 people and I had just a couple random openings here and there, it, instead of going back to the list, I just posted on Instagram. I said, Instagram, I'm gonna be here on these dates, go book it. And within you know an hour, it was completely booked. But I, as soon as it was fully booked then, I took down that post as well because I didn't wanna have people going to the website and being bummed that you know there was nothing available. But as soon as my trip was fully booked to go back home, I had people just blowing me up like, when are you coming back? Someone said you're coming back. Do you have time for me? And dude, it freaking kills me to have to say, yes, I am coming back. I'm going to be there for four whole days, but no, I don't have time for you. So that sucks. I did not anticipate how crummy that would feel to have such a limited time to come back for clients. And like, Man, I just picture, you know, in the Lord of the Rings movies when the, the giant monster, like during the battle scenes, the, the war scenes, he's got like a giant ax. He's just wiping people out left and right and they're just falling off. Um, like that's what I feel like I'm doing to my clientele in California is like just people are just falling off like flies because I can't get them in. And, you know, there's always, even after all these years, like there's certain times where like, on the rare occasion that I would just like completely mess up my schedule, double book people or just like something bad would happen where I'm like, oh dude, I screwed up. There's always that fear like this guy's not coming back. I feel that like repeatedly trying to schedule my trips coming back to California. So the original plan was to open up dates each month to where while I'm here in California on these dates, I'm gonna open up the dates for the following month. 
And then when I come the following month, I'll open up dates for the next month after that. And so I just planned to open it one month at a time as, I, as time moved forward. But on like the first day, we ran into an issue where we found that that wasn't gonna work very well. You see, I had a client on my first day who was like, oh yeah, you're gonna be back next month. I was like, hey, you can pre-book it before you even leave the salon. And she goes, I, I won't need a haircut next month. Like, how about November? Like, will you call me in November? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not gonna have the, I'm not gonna remember who to call. Like, I wish I could. I was like, maybe just, I don't know, check the website in October. Maybe I'll have November dates. And it occurred to me, like, that was going to happen. Like, because not every client gets a haircut once a month. Some clients want to come in. Most of my clients actually are once a quarter, maybe, or like once every other month. So I realized that it was going to be hugely beneficial to just open my books out as far as I possibly could. So as soon as I got home from that trip, I opened up my books through January. That, I realized, was so much better because now I've got appointments through January, people are booked. So now at this point, I have contacted all of my clients and said, yes, I'll be back. I'll be back all these dates through January. And the clients who were like, like every month, like clockwork, routine clients, they went and I could see on my booking app, it was all so-and-so booked, so-and-so booked. The same guy just booked like once a month until January. That is so much peace of mind for me. While I have basically zero income here in Tennessee, I know that once a month, I'm gonna fly to California, make some money and then come back home. On the flip side too, I have some appointments where it's like, okay, they got a haircut in um, September and they have one in October and then they have one in like December. Like, so they, um, the clients who are every other month are now booked out every other month. And so highly recommend that. Um, if you are going to do the back and forth thing, do the math on how many clients you could take per visit and be realistic about how you'll be contacting them and who you'll be contacting. If you know you can only take, if you're a colorist and you're like, dude, I can come back for a week and do like eight colors or something, you, you're probably going to have to handpick those colors since you're only going to have, you know, one week here and there, every six weeks or eight weeks or whatever. So do, or however, however you work out the return visits, like do that math way in advance. I did that math way too late. Like I did like, I screwed up the math so much, dude. Like when I would fly between LA and Nashville, flights were like, two to three hundred bucks round trip with no stops and then i just thought you know there's a closer airport to my salon in california and i thought well when i'm actually doing these trips i'll just fly into that airport it's probably a couple bucks more dude it's like 800 bucks to fly into john wayne or long beach and so that's a shorter drive to the salon from the airport but i'm going to spend like four times as much on my flight to do that but i didn't do any of that math until after the wheels hit the road and i was making these moves and i was like dude i should have planned this way better so do all the math on all the things before you make any moves at all. Like don't just assume you're gonna fit in, like your clients are gonna figure out who wants to fit in or you're gonna just put it out there and it's gonna book. It, it was a big, a big stressful cluster fudge for me. And I think, I think it's playing out pretty well now. I'm going back to California in like two more weeks and that trip is fully booked. Um, hopefully there's no more hiccups, but it was not what I expected. I thought it was gonna be so smooth and so easy. And I even have like, like the world's greatest reception staff at my salon. Like they're so on top of everything. And even with that, like there's just been a little bit of headaches, a little bit of hiccups, a little bit of frustration, a little bit of um, difficulties and not, not even frustration. I'm not like mad. I'm, I feel sad and bad that I can't just take all my clients on every trip. So now as far as building in Tennessee, getting new clients, I guess it's worth noting that I'm in a position because of everything I talked about in this long-winded rant, I'm in a position where as long as I can go back to California once a month, I can make enough money that I don't need to have clients here in Tennessee. In the long term, I need to have clients here because I can't be flying to California once a month for 10 years. I don't have pressure to get clients tomorrow. I have essentially all the time in the world to get the right kind of clients for me. I'm gonna move so the sun's out of my face. Although it feels real nice to wake up for waking up. What was that Andrew Huberman talks about waking up and looking at morning sunlight. I'm all about that. Anyways, yeah, so I guess this would be like the main point, the big takeaway for this video is in addition to like, oh, how are you gonna get new clients when, when you move to your new area? It's, that's not even the biggest problem. You will get new clients sooner or later. And I expect to get new clients sooner or later. I don't think it's gonna happen overnight. Um, but the whole point of this is I put myself in a position where I don't have to get clients immediately. 
I can take my time to let the clientele grow in a way that I can kind of sculpt it to continue doing the kind of hair that I enjoy. Um, I've already been faced with a couple scenarios since I've been here where people would reach out for haircuts and I look at their hair and I'm like, dang, that's not the kind of haircuts I do. Like there's haircuts that I can do, but I don't do so well that I want to charge a hundred plus dollars for it and put my name on it. Like there's haircuts that I would do for a friend or on a mannequin, but I wouldn't want to do for a paying client. And since I've been here, I've had requests for those haircuts and I've had these moments where I'm like, dude, if you take this haircut, you will grow faster. You will get more clients, but it's not the kind of client you want. It's not the kind of haircut you do. And so I think if I put myself in a position where I wasn't able to do these California trips, where I, where I had a big scary mortgage to, to make, um, where I was, you know, where I, where I had all kinds of debt and no savings in that position, I would have to take the haircut I didn't want to do. And I believe that if you're doing haircuts that you're not good at, you're not going to grow. Like, I, I, I think personally, if, if you're trying to get every client you can get in the chair, and even if it's a haircut you're not good at, even if it's a haircut you're not comfortable with, you're like, I don't care, I just need to get as many clients as I can get, I think that could be part of the reason you're not growing. And I think if I did that, it would prevent me from growing. And even, even aside from, like I wouldn't enjoy my job if I was doing haircuts that I don't like to do. I think like, yeah, I, if I had sat and made bullet points and a script and stuff, that's kind of the idea that I would really lean on through this video is, if you're gonna move across the country and rebuild your clientele, put yourself in a position where you can take your time to build your clientele the way that you like it. Don't put yourself in a position where you're desperate to take anyone. Because it's very, very easy if you're, if you're just like loaded with debt and you're in a, and you're in a position where you, you have to just take any head that walks in the door, that's, that would stress me out so, so much. And that's not to say I'm not stressed. I'm, I'm stressed. Like I, my, my income went from average and okay to next to nothing right now. But I also, all I do is sit in this backyard and drink coffee. So I don't need any income. And if it takes me two years to get my, my clientele here, like books booked steadily doing the kind of hair that I like to do, I would rather slowly get to there then go work somewhere tomorrow where I'm doing a bunch of, like one of my, my brother-in-law actually said, you know, he doesn't do hair or anything. Obviously he's, he's just like, like a guy. Um, he's all, why don't you go work at a great clips in the meantime? So, so you can provide for your family. I'm like, because that's not the kind of hair I do. And I don't like, I don't want to get, I don't want to get sucked into doing hair that I don't do just because I'm desperate and, and freaking out. I'm not desperate. I'm not freaking out. I, I put myself in a position where I can continue to do the work that I do, even if it takes me some time to find the right kind of clients. I hope any of this advice, or, or it's not even advice really, I hope any of these stories, any of these stories or this storytelling here might have helped you light a, a light bulb over your head, whether you're pre, mid, or post regrowing your clientele. Uh, this is my first time that I, well, it's not, it's not my first time I've had to regrow my clientele. I, I did actually in like 2016, I basically fired all my clients and for three years, I just did a lot of trade shows and classes and things and I didn't really take clients. And then in 2019, I had to start rebuilding my clientele. And so I have rebuilt before. It took me about two years to get fully booked full time. And that's kind of what I'm expecting this time as well. The difference is now, I'm in a different state rebuilding. So I rebuilt before in my original state where it was a lot of, in California, it was a lot of, um, a lot of clients who used to come to me who then stopped coming to me, came back to me. So I'm not gonna have that here. Um, but I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I wanted to just kind of do this video too, even though you know it's shaky and rough and rambly and I'm just like going off topic. And I wanted to do this also just kind of as a placeholder so that in six months when I do like an update, there'll be like, a point of reference. I, I wanted to do this video right now as well, instead of waiting six months until after I was already starting to build up some. I wanted to do the video now because I'm in the middle of it. I'm in the thick of it. I'm working one day a week in Tennessee because I don't have clients and I'm not gonna go sit in the salon five days a week with no clients. I'm gonna sit in the salon one day a week with no clients. And so I'm waking up every day like, what do I do with myself? I've been doing the yard work, that's been fun. I've been drinking a lot of coffee and sitting around here playing with my kids obviously, which is what this whole thing was all about. But uh, 
I'm like, dude, I just, I'm just gonna make a YouTube video while I'm in the thick of it, while I have no income, while I have no thing to do, while I'm feeling the feelings, I wanted to get the, the video out. Not, not something where in six months from now I do a video and look back and go, yeah, this is what it was like. Like, I wanna do it while I'm in the middle of it. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, I'm not gonna ask you to like and subscribe for this kind of content here. This is, I, I don't know, I guess more or less just kind of catching up with the homies and telling them what I've been up to really, if, if they haven't caught it on Instagram or anything.